May you join with me in prayer before we start. May those that can kneel, may we kneel. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, as we do come before you, we thank you so much for your Son, that precious gift that you gave to us, that came in the likeness of man, in our very humanity. He came and he has called these people, his brethren. We thank you that um, we can see how you can work in our hearts and our minds to the very depths that you give us peace and guidance and understanding. I pray that the captives be set free. I pray as a church that we can work together with our gifts, give us strength and guidance and help us. We pray for this message has been welling up on my heart for many, many years. I presented it a little bit here, a little bit there. I pray it will continue to grow and I pray for a testimony of people that surely will know that Christ is their Saviour and that will affect the body of Christ. For this we do ask in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So basically, up, you've got on the screen there, you've got a, a box and it's got pills in it. Now, these particular things is what we're talking about today, is medication, right? Um, psychiatric medication. So someone starts off on one and then they progress to many, many. Sometimes these people can't get off them. Some people it ends in suicide. Some people um, they're just hopeless and lost. They don't have, don't have jobs. They can't get their lives in order. And there's little things there, just a little tiny bit of white. People think, oh, just a pill, but what is it actually doing? Sometimes the medication doesn't work and they've got to result to shock treatment. This shock treatment is barbaric because they used to not give people medications and, and, and sedatives, but now they do and they think that's better. So have you been deceived by sorceries is the question today. I pray today that you will see something whereby even of late, even know what I know, I've been deceived and continually seeing the depth of where we have been deceived. Okay, so we'll look at this. Have you been deceived by sorceries? In Revelation 18, 23, it says, And the light of the candle shall shine no more and all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more and all in thee. For thy merchants were great men of the earth, for by sorceries were all nations deceived. Here we have and we can see that the merchants of the earth are connected with sorceries. And Revelation 14, 8 says, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So we've got sorceries, which is dealing with pharmaceutical medicine, medicines, and then we have the beast power, which is another deceptive power, spreading false wine of doctrine in regards to what people think as how they can be connected to God. Now, as we know, that... False doctrine, right, what it leads to is an improper way how we can surrender our will completely and wholly so Christ can work in us. So the true purpose of doctrine is the fact that we can surrender our will so God can fully and completely work in us. Sorceries. Pharmacia. In the Strong's Concordance, 5331, pharmacia is closely related to 5332, medicine, pharmacy, magic, sorcery, witchcraft. 
Revelation 18, 11. And the merchants, here again that merchants, the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchants any more. So here we have that situation one time with this merchants of the earth, they'll have no more um, buying of things. Now what do they buy? What do these merchants do? What, who do they buy? 18, Revelation 18, 13. And cinnamon, and odours, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horse, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. So connected with sorceries, we have merchants, and we have the souls of men, the slaves of men, they're in bondage. Revelation 9, 21. Neither repented they of their murderers, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So here we have sorceries and fornication and thefts. And they repented not of these things. They repented not of sorceries. Notice this, they repented not of sorceries. They believe it was right. But is it? Who is behind all this? Of course, we have Satan, dragon, working through, the wine of Babylon, the beast. Revelation 23, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he shall be loosed a little season. And notice that he shall deceive the nations no more. Closely connected. 1823, so if all nations were deceived by sorceries, then we need an education so that we will be not deceived ourselves. We need an education ourselves so we won't be deceived. And what is that education that we need? Now notice this. When the character of Christ is perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come. That's talking about the second coming of Christ. When the character of Christ, notice the word, you must notice these little key words, perfectly, I've underlined it. Perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come. That's a big solemn oath, isn't it? Perfectly reproduced. When we think about that. How is character formed? Notice this. This is just one little aspect of mind, character, personality. A lot of the books that Ellen White wrote in regards to the thoughts and the feelings. And if we think that thoughts and feelings don't have anything to do with the plan of salvation, we are horribly deceived. This is how God works in us. After we're on that platform, of Christ, he actually works in us. We have a will to surrender. And through that process, there is thoughts and feelings. Moment by moment, we are thinking and doing. So notice this, if the thoughts are wrong, the feelings will be wrong, and the thoughts and the feelings combined make up the moral character. So what happens is, when people are in this sort of realm, they're horribly into feelings. They believe they've got to work out their feelings. But the whole thing is they need to look at their thoughts because their thoughts produce their feelings. If you look at the feelings trying to work things out, you're horribly lost. It's the thoughts. In our walk today, notice the thoughts are very important. What is stopping the 144,000 to be formed? What is stopping this process? Because it hasn't happened yet. Answer, Satan has deceived all nations into thinking that God's people don't really have to worry about their thoughts because Christ is coming soon. Or you could say, believe, 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 believe. We're all in Christ. Just have faith and God will work it all out. Is that true faith? That's presumption. That is presumption to the highest order. People who are on medication and want to come off their medication don't really believe that their thoughts have a large role in being drug free. Now there's countless times in which I've shared with people about this the education does take time, and most of the time, the first time, it goes straight over their head. I tell you what, no one has ever come to me with problems said, and said, Stuart, how do you do it? Really, and sit down. I mean, I've done it. I've been off medication now 15 years, but no one really comes to me and they say, how did you do it? So therefore, I know that this, this sorceries, this, this problem of depth of what we're into, it's so big, and the whole thing is that education needs to be given again and again and again. How often do we go over the plan of salvation? Again, we look at an angle this way and that way and so forth. Now, 
This is um, something that I've put together. A lot of these statements you'll see here are not from the spirit of prophecy. They're from my own experience of relating to you of what is actually going on. As the classification for mental illness grows with more and more labels and medication, people are being deceived, weakened, separated from their true purpose to life. Their characters to good have been desensitized and their true talents and gifts have not been heard. Could it be that an enemy has successfully divided society and have stopped the true leaders from their true, their true voice to be heard? Is it true that Satan has divided our society and the people that really want to do something, the weakest of the weak, are not heard, are put down, drugged, separated? Church history. Now we're going to look at a practical demonstration in regards to this, in regards to church history. And what happened, I'm not, this, this, in 1960, roughly the 1960, the Brinsmead movement, the awakening, in the height of the movement, subjects presented included the sanctuary. They talked a lot in regards to the sanctuary message, the ins and outs of it. They discussed these things. They discussed the humanity of Christ, what we're talking about today. They were looking at these issues. The church back then, the conference churches, were talking about the wrong humanity of Christ. Well, they started to talk about what we're talking about now. Health reformers, they were definitely health reformers. They were um, watching what they ate and looking, um, practicing the eight laws of health. And they were going forward with being health reformers. They lived and preached country living. living. Bob Brimsmead at the meetings. I'm only telling you this from a first-hand experience of someone that was very close to Bob Brimsmead. And um, they, he, he used to be up the front and say, now, who is in the country, oh, sorry, in the city? You need to get out. And he used to really be big on that. He used to say, get out, you know, because Christ is coming and we need to go on. They were really expecting the, for Christ to come in that time. Now, they had their own hymns and sang a lot about the blotting out of sin. They had their own hymns saying, blot my sin out. And, you know, I don't have those hymns, but they had their own hymns and they talked and sang a lot about the blotting out of sin. Now, the blotting out of sin is yet to take place. And the blotting out of sin is when um, that outpouring comes because the cultivated tendencies to evil are going to get sorted out. Not the hereditary, but the cultivated. Now, Bob Brimsmead talked a lot about the mind. There was a time that he talked about the, the mind and the thoughts. And they're at a country retreat. And he said, he said, look at the, the cows in the hills there and see how they're making a line and a thorough in the, in the ground. You can see the line going up there. You can see the grass. Can you see the track there? And he kept on saying this. Can you see the track? in the mountain and they said yes we can and he says do you know through Christ that you can form a right habit pattern you through Christ can form these habit patterns if you surrender your will and he kept on talking about this for months and months and then he stopped talking about it he didn't say it anymore it was almost like it wasn't important anymore and he said we need to get back to the um, Reformation and he said, after that, he said, you remember when I put, used to put up the sanctuary on the board? Do you remember when I used to put it up on the board? And that means he's given it up. That means he's not doing it anymore. And the eyewitness there saw that message of the thoughts, the feelings, the great controversy. And he said, I'm out of here. Even at his, he left at its height. He left. And in 12 months later, the awakening collapsed. Gone. I'm not doing this to try and pull down Bob Brimsmead. I'm trying to use this as an illustration. If we deny the aspects that our thoughts and the way in which we develop um, Christ's character, if we get away from that simple fact, if we don't believe that anymore, we're going to be horribly... At this time, the light has been given. We need to follow the light, and if we reject that, we will slowly go out into darkness. Now notice this statement. It's not mental disease, it is character disease. Character disease, not mental disease. 
It is possible that some of these people are needed to be part of the 144,000 as a catalyst. This is the weak people, the people that are on drugs, the people that are supposed to be leaders but they're being captured. But Satan has successfully divided the church or deceived the church so the 144,000 will not be formed then Christ can't come. So if you don't form the 144,000, then Christ can't come. We can talk about, yes, Christ has to come and his character's got to be perfectly reproduced in his people, but that has to produce something as well. Not only in our lives, but the 144,000 has to be starting to be formed. The gifts and the talents to produce that message as well. It's not just about us. It's about God's gifts that need to be vindicated and given and supported and nurtured. So a, what is a catalyst? A catalyst is something that facilitates a change. That's what a catalyst is. And people or the poor and needy, sometimes that is what facilitates the change. The poor and needy, the simple people, the people that God sees light but the other leaders see of no use and we need to have a discerning spirit to help these people i believe that i've got an attribute of the gift of healing in regards to this that i can see problems in a congregation when i was in martinsville raising up that church i had that gift it extends not just to helping people with drugs but physical disease but it's also reading the congregation seeing what's needed and foreseeing disaster who was Christ's first missionary? The demoniac. The demoniac was Christ's first missionary. Now this first missionary, before he became the first missionary, had problems. And he was trained to look for the oracles of God. And he was trained to look at Jerusalem for instruction. And as Sister White says, as he looked upon Jerusalem, for instruction, he was trying to get help, his condition got worse. So if you've got a wrong message and someone comes to you for help, that person's condition is going to get worse. But if their condition is getting better, then that could be something in relation to proving the truth, mightn't it? Now, it reached a point that this man was chained up in the caves and now Christ is coming past him you know walking through the field and the demoniac breaks his chains and says who are you son of God he can only utter the words of Satan but but Christ and read his heart that he was saying I need you you are my salvation and he was saying these things so likewise, people that might be going through these things might be saying things that we quite can't understand. But if you be sensitive and talk to those people with a gift, you can actually decipher what's going on. You can start to read as to where that deep issue is coming from and direct that. So what should the first work be? I mean, we've, we've had prophecy seminars, we've had this particular work, we've had this and this health retreats, whatever. But have we ever, ever, as a church, started with the weakest of the weak, people that are in bondage, and allowing them, at this these days, to be the first missionary? Education to the weakest of weak and allow them to blossom. Notice the word blossom, a flower starts to, doesn't just go pop into a flower. The, the leaves uh, get the sun and the, the, the petals start to open up bit by bit. It starts to look at the sun, it starts to grow. A blossom. Now notice this, now we're looking at the labels of these people that are the weakest of the weak and how all this come about to try to put them in bondage. In 1898, there was only three so-called issues reported by the first psychiatrist. There was three noted mental issues. Three, not 374 as there is today. But let's look at these three in detail and simplicity of it. First was psychosis. They noticed and they put down psychosis. 
And the next one was manic depression, or these days it's called bipolar. And the third is schizophrenia. Now, anybody that hasn't been connected with Christ and might have some sort of inkling in themselves that they've got a gift from God but they don't understand it and it's been hid from them, say. And what happens is the thing that's convicting them, this enmity, they might know about Christ but they might start to do a silly little thing like business principles and they kept on studying and they overwork and they don't sleep. They don't sleep and their, their sleep goes down. Instead of being eight hours, it's seven hours and six hours and five hours and they're only getting three hours a night of sleep. Three hours a night. And so because of that factor, and maybe because it's character disease and not mental disease, they're burning out and they're abusing their rights of the gift that God has given them. And so what happens? They develop a psychosis. Okay? Psychosis is an altered state, feelings of grandeur, feelings of, if you talk to someone in psychosis, you, you're, they're totally... Um, just off with the fairies, okay? But what happens is eventually what goes up must come down and they go down. And what happens is they get so low that people say, oh, even when they're high or for psychosis, people say you're a problem. But let's just say they've got through that phase and now they go to the, like the lower end of the scale. What happens is they're now wanting some sort of help. Even their families might say to them, look, they can't work anymore because they've just lost all their sleep and now they're a mess. They're trying to get their, they've, they made all these sort of so-called plans in, in, in when they've got a psychosis and their life's, all these loose ends are now crushing them, crushing them to death. And so what happens is they get labelled bipolar, up and down, up and down. Here we have psychosis turns into manic depression. Okay. Now, say for instance you have now got this habit pattern because you have abused the laws of health. You're starting to get these wrong habit patterns. Remember, it's character disease, not mental disease. You get wrong character ideas. You might have a, induced that with a bit of alcohol and whatever to reinforce that issue. And you start to get high very, very high, and you get to an altered state that you stay in this, this realm and you start to hear all these sorts of crazy ideas, more crazy than when you're high. It's a really big high. And what happens is you start to probably, um, you might um, get involved with going to the doctors and you take medications and that can give you the voices in your head Medication has proved that that can give you um, schizophrenic drugs can cause voices in your head. So now you're labelled schizophrenia, and these drugs, once you're on them, is very very hard to get off them. Now, from my observation, the people who fall prey to the above are generally sensitive, creative, have a lot of energy, very enthusiastic, and possibly leaders. They are never given a chance. They're not understood and are separated from. People because man longs to rule over his fellow man. The negative side of their above characteristics is because of the frustration and the sleeping patterns are jeopardised and in a period of time due to breaking the health laws, a psychosis begins. It all starts with a psychosis. Now the person may go into mania, high, and what goes up must come down. Now the person gets depressed, low. The person is labelled with bipolar and then possibly drugged for the rest of their lives. Now it's time for our presentation. We're going to share something with you. Um, last time I shared with you um, a DVD. There's five in circulation that, what I've, that I've given you. The last time we looked at was the DSM. And with the DSM, it was, I showed it last time, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual. It talks about all to do in regards, in regards to these particular 374 disorders from 
Now it's 374, not 3. Now what's happened is, this one is called Psychiatry, the Industry of Death. Um, so is there any other children in the audience? Maybe if um, the little, that, yes, please. Um, just for 12 minutes, if there's any children in the audience, please. Um, could they be taken outside? Because these, these things that you might see here, I must present this to you because it's very riveting. I hope this makes an impression on you, but I don't want it to be on the children, please. I thought I'd have to show you that so you know the seriousness of what is actually taking place. It's serious because now, instead of doing all those particular techniques, what we have, it's done through a pill. This is happening and it's real. So the diagnostical DSM, Diagnostical Statistical Manual, now has 374 disorders and counting and they're continually doing that. They're getting into schools, young in America, they're actually advertising on TV that you need this drug, you're feeling like this and you need it. Don't worry, it's going to happen here. What happens in America, it'll happen here too. Final outcome, Matthew 24.14. Notice this in Matthew 24.14. It says, and, the gospel, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be, shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So notice this. It says the word there, for a witness. For a witness reveals back to the character of Christ, but that witness is also the people, the weakest of the weak, actually getting victory, becoming part of the 144,000. Malachi 4, 5 and 6, it's, it talks about um, Behold, I shall send Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. But notice this, there's an education, turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Turning, this there's got to be a, um, a way in which we can educate people. We need missionary colleges in Australia. We need to do something here in Australia. We need institutions in which we've got um, people that don't have a job. They can cultivate the ground. They can learn how to do trades. They can build things while they're there. And they become like a missionary thing. This is going to happen. This will take place. Daniel 12.4, knowledge shall be increased. What is this knowledge? The knowledge of what we're talking about, how we get victory and how the people that are um, separated and how they're drugged, how they can get victory in regards to the knowledge shall be increased. This knowledge, what does it do? Daniel 12, 9, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are what? Closed up and sealed to the time of the end. I believe that what we're looking at, especially with the doctrines at the moment in regards to sin and what's happening is, this is all attributes of this um, closed up and sealed to the time of the end. There's an education that's needed to go to the weakest of the weak. And this education is also going to affect people that don't have any so-called problems. They're catalysts, these people, and the, the, I believe the enthusiasm that they're going to have is going to create effect on us, and even me. Daniel 12.10, many shall be purified and made white what is this? They go through a what? A purification process. There's an educational thing that's happening. They're purified and made white and they're tried. See, there's a test. There's a, there's a patience to get, to get. But the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand. Now, notice this. that um, An example of this is my mum is in hospital at the moment and the doctors don't want to go with my particular plan of backing up other doctors that got results. And I was supposed to take my mum out of hospital Wednesday and transfer her to another hospital. And the thing is, I've either got to transfer her to a hospital that's willing, or I'll have to go to her previous psychiatrist and get um, those medications and treat her at home, okay? Anyway, today I rang up the hospital, spoke to the nurse, and, I, and she said, oh, look, Stu, um, your mum doesn't want to talk to you. Um, she doesn't want to talk to anyone. She's refusing to get out of bed. 
And I said, do you understand why she's getting it, not getting out of bed? And she said, oh. And she, I said, well, it's because she was supposed to go home on Wednesday and not go home but be released. And um, with all this particular thing that's going on, she said, oh, I don't want to talk about this. She said, I'm terminating the call now. <laughs> and she said, um, I don't believe what you're saying. I said, well, that's what's happening. You talk, th that's what's happening. And what's happening is they think that she's in bed because of a disorder. She's simply in bed now, refusing to get out because it's so frustrating. And as soon as I said this, she said, oh, um, I'm, I'm terminating the call. Don't, don't say this. And, and what, what does it say? Revelation 14, here is the patience. Notice that, here is the patience of the saints. Here they keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14, here is the patience. So here we have, again, which is a powerful scripture, but sometimes we miss that. Here is the patience of the saints. There's something in regards to requiring patience. Ephesians 4, 13 says, till we all come in the unity of the faith. Most importantly is that this particular knowledge that I'm talking to you about today, I can tell you now that probably less than 1% of the population knows and understands what I'm talking about. These are the doctors that you saw with their accreditations are denouncing their own field, but they're probably 1% prepared to stand up. One, less than probably 1% of society. So when you read books out there, it's all riddled with this false wine of, it's another wine of Babylon basically, from, it's all from Satan. Now notice this, if you believe any of the following, you have been deceived by sorceries. Let's take this through. Let's do the test. Let's see if you've been deceived by sorceries. Do you believe in psycholabels? Do you believe that there is things like, I know people go through experiences and they have problems, but do you believe in anxiety, depression, manic depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, all these labels? Do you really believe, if you believe in psycholabels, you are deceived. If you believe that psychology will solve your problems, you are also deceived. If you believe it's the Bible plus psychology, you're deceived. It's only the word of God through his truths that can set you free. Now, someone that is a true counsellor that talks about the Bible and the Bible only, that is true. And there's three different types of counselling today. One is secular psychology, purely no Bible, it's just secular. And there's another one that is the Bible and psychology, and then there's true Christian counselling. And true Christian counselling is probably about probably 1% of society because when someone comes to the congregation and they've got problems, oh, you better go and see the professional. Now, going to the professional means to be drugged or psychology, and eventually that probably will lead to drugs. But as soon as that pastor says, go to the professional, what have they got? Drugs and wrong philosophy. Now, if I or they need something more than the Bible and the spirit of prophecy as a source of healing. So what I'm saying is because we're Adventists, I put up their spirit of prophecy because we have that light as well. But basically, um, if you believe the true, the true source is outside the Bible and the Bible, you know, spirit of prophecy, you believe that it's outside of that and it's something else additional, you're deceived. You know they used to suffer from. So when you, some, some people will say, oh, that person's behaving badly, but, but you know they used to suffer with this. And they, that person is deceived. If you believe that people who are suffering have something different in their brain, if you believe that people who are suffering, the bipolar, schizophrenia, all these labels, if you believe there's something physically wrong in the brain, there's something wrong in there, you're deceived. If you believe in the chemical imbalance theory, you're deceived. Psalms, now this is interesting, this passage of scripture is so powerful of what we've been talking about today. Let's unpack this one. And I'm going to share with you my testimony in relation to this particular verse. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill, that he, he may sit him with princes, even the princes of his people. He raises the poor out of the dust. 
and lifted the needy out of the dunghill circumstances, the lowness things of life, that he may set him with princes and the princes of his people. We're going to talk about what the princes and the princes of his people are. But Matthew says in 5.3, says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. People that are in need, they're wanting. They're wanting. This is where God works, in that, that poor spirit crying out after righteousness. Testimony. Listen to this. This happened when in my 20s, early 20s. I drove deliberately on the wrong side of the road from Moore Park to Newtown, approximately five kilometres, to crucify myself. Early 20s. I heard about Jesus first on the road at King's Cross or Wayside. See, when I was looking at this whole thing in my own experience, I was labelled with bipolar when I was 17. And the doctor said, well, we don't know why this happens. And a little voice said, you're going to find out why, how, when and where. And again, I've had all these impressions and dreams all the way through. And notice that King's Cross there, I heard about that. And notice I'm linking that to the wayside. Hospitalisation. My mind felt totally burnt out for about one year, but I still worked as a electrical contractor. When that happened to me, when I was put into hospital, and my, actually my dad um, got a solicitor involved so I wouldn't have to be there for six months. They were talking about actually I possibly might have to rem get my licence removed. But I was in there for two weeks and then released under care and control of my parents and I managed to work. I managed to actually work and I think I only had that two weeks off. And I felt as though my mind and my brain was actually burnt out. I thought, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get out of this? And at that time, because my mania, notice this, because my mania was so high and I was so high, they diagnosed me with schizophrenia. Okay? Because my mania was so high. Remember the progression? Psychosis, bipolar, schizophrenia. Aren't I proving something here from my own experience? Out of the dust. Out of the dust. What does this mean? To my experience from this scripture, out of the dust. Revelation 5, 6 stood a lamb as it had been slain. Now, notice this with that first scripture. Stood a lamb as it had been slain. Here's Jesus wanting to have his people ready. And it's like the lamb that has been slain. It's like the lamb that has his throat been cut, but he's still in anguish. He's still wanting. He's still there, pleading as high priest. But he also is that lamb that is slain from the foundations of the world. Jesus Christ is still suffering now and wants us to make an end of sins. Also, there is the enmity that tells us that we are doing what we're doing is right or wrong. And also, there is the mystery of godliness, which has been preordained in the plan of salvation to produce many gifts and talents and fruit, etc. Satan is ever ready to stop this formation. Soon as Satan starts to see someone and know these knowledges, he tries to catch it away. And he'll do it through groups. I've seen it in recent times, very recent times, not here, but very recent times, how he wants to stop this message. There are many ways people react to the enmity and gift that God has preordained and given, given them. They are usually unconscious at certain times of ups and downs. These characteristics start to shine out and if they are not held in check, Satan will lead us on a destroying pathway to suicide or react so badly that we are on medications for the rest of our lives or to have a similar experience as the demoniac and possibly never gain freedom. Remember, it is character disease, not mental disease. Character disease. Matthew 13, 19. And what's this one talking about? When someone hears this understanding, if someone, when I was at King's Cross, when I started to hear about Jesus Christ, what it was is that 
may be that at that time I had an impression and a glimpse of what the 144,000 was, that mystery of godliness. I didn't understand. I saw the attribute of Christ, what he, what he did for me, and I wanted to die like him. It was a perverted idea. But deep down, just like the demoniac, he wanted Christ. Deep down, I didn't understand that I was actually seeing the 144,000 in an understand, I didn't understand what it was. There was some spark. But what happened is Satan, as I said, made me drive on the wrong side of the road. And cars were dodging me and finally someone didn't get out of my way. Bang! I was going 60 kilometres an hour. They were going 60 kilometres an hour. And bang! I couldn't get out of the, the car. I had to crawl out. When the accident happened, I had no barriers in the back of the car. And anyway, all the tools went whoom, on the passenger side. They didn't hit me in the head. It went whoom, and I saw them. They went bang. A whole lot of tools went bang. How come it didn't hit me in the back of the head? I would have been dead. <laughs> but Christ said, they love their lives not unto death because I was willing to die for Christ. I was seeing something. This is my gift and I believe that I have an attribute in regards to the 144,000. And many people don't understand. When anyone heareth the, the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches the way that was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. At King's Cross, when I heard that word about Jesus, I heard it by the wayside, and Satan took it away. He wanted to kill me because I saw that attribute. Just like he is today, he doesn't want the 144,000 to be formed. He doesn't want the people, the poor and needy, to be leaders because the leaders don't want, the present leaders don't want them to be leaders. Man longs to rule over his fellow man. It's a principle. And lifteth the needy out of the dunghill. He lifteth the needy out of the dunghill and set him with princes, even the princes of his people. I hope now you can start to see that the people suffering are no different to anyone else according to the brain. They have only generated improper thinking habits that, that they think is, it's them. But if they were to change their thinking and generate their thoughts in a new way through being on a platform of Jesus Christ, they will slowly create windows of experience that will eventually let them out of prison. As the great deception in the last days Healing at this point is generally slow and steady. But when the true body of Christ is totally formed, these people who spent years re-unfolding will see miracles of great proportion. As the moon was to the disciples, the sun will be to us in proportion to the great work and finishing of redemption. The princes are God's people. So he causes those people to sit with God's people. But not only that, he causes them to sit with the princes of his people. And the princes of his people are the 144,000. So if someone doesn't want to be the 144,000, it doesn't matter. But if you want to strive to be amongst the 144,000, then do it. But what I'm saying is the poor and the needy, they become it. If they can do it, everyone in God's church can do it. Aren't they a catalyst? <laughs> Don't you see? Okay, that's the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening. Those who can kneel, may we kneel. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, as we do come before you, we thank you so much that you are a God that truly, in every way, does set us free. And I thank you for these truths that have just recently, as I looked at these things of, you know, are we born sinners? 
how this has really the, under, the true understanding, the understanding that there are great deceptions there, but looking at the truth has thrilled my heart, thrilled my life. My whole Christian experience has changed. I feel like I've just come into the truth. I feel a freshness. I pray for your spirit to come upon us, and I pray that we can all come into the unity. We ask these things in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, we pray.